I already knew I was an asshole. So it was no surprise when Todd, the don't get me wrong, I'm an atheist too, confirmed it on our Facebook page. Sent me a long tirade about what a waste of time everything we do is, how we'll never get rid of religion, and how we movement atheists are a bunch of privileged jerks who piss away our time barking at the imagined specters of persecution. And in evidence of what an asshole I am, he pointed to other more persecuted groups, both present day and historical, that were really persecuted. I mean, how can we bitch about somebody giving a religious person only discounts when other people are burned alive and or denied the right to vote? He then goes on to answer his rhetorical question, and it turns out that the reason we're able to bitch about that kind of stuff is because we're assholes. Now, I hear this a lot, even from prominent atheists and those that professionally plagiarize from prominent atheists. I saw David Silverman being demonized on Twitter for saying that atheists are, quote, the most hated group in America, end quote. Now, never mind that Silverman was pointing to a survey that asked people what group they hated most. Never mind the fact that atheists consistently top the list when people are asked which groups they trust the least, which they like the least, which they're least likely to vote for, which they would least likely to see their family member marry. Apparently none of that matters to some folks because other groups have it way worse than we do. And look, that's as true as it is irrelevant. Atheists are, on the average, wealthier and more educated than their theistic counterpart. I think most of us would agree that we're way better off in American society than any number of other minority groups. Hell, that's probably why atheist groups consistently dedicate so much of their effort towards gay rights and women's rights and transgender rights and the rights of racial minorities and the rights of minority religions. We know that there's a marked and qualitative difference in the type of discrimination we face and the type many other people face. But does that mean that we're not allowed to bitch about the inequities that we do encounter? Are we earning social justice one demographic at a time? Only the most persecuted group gets to complain? So all, all the rest of us have to wait for the disabled, black, Latina, lesbian, vegetarian, Muslim with AIDS to get equality before anybody else gets to go? These Uncle Thomas Aquinas types will point out that the survey might not reflect reality. You know, After all, a person in our society isn't as likely to be honest with some random pollster about their racial prejudice. So even if they secretly hate black people way more than they hate atheists, they're not going to say that. And you know what? There's probably some truth to that. But doesn't the fact that people don't mind telling random pollsters that they hate atheists support Silverman's point? And this paradoxical confluence of delusion just amazes me because at the same time that I'm inundated with unholier-than-thou atheists telling me that the Pledge of Allegiance and the religion on the money and the prayer discounts and the Christian flags and national days of prayer and the Ten Commandments monuments and the manger scenes on the courthouse lawn and the exclusively Christian public meeting prayers and the crosses on public property and the de facto exclusion from higher public office doesn't amount to persecution. I'm also listening to a bunch of paranoid Christians screaming that Chile is encouraging their employees to say happy holidays does. Ah, the status quo. What amazing powers you wield. Because that's all this is. It's a failure to measure by an objective standard. You know, you get a 40-year-old atheist looks 20 years in the past and sees a lot of progress. We're, we're more able to openly discuss our ideas. You know, being openly secular doesn't carry the same stigma it used to in most of the country. And, and the president even remembers to throw us a bone while he blurs the line of church-state separation at the national prayer breakfast. They see what they had, they see what they have, and they don't bother measuring either of those things against what they should have. Now, at the same time, 40-year-old Christian looks 20 years in the past and sees that they've lost a bit of their preferential status, right? They don't have the same power that they used to. They can't get away with the same violations they used to. They don't have quite as much augmented equality as they once had, so they see persecution. Because, again, they're not comparing it to fair. They're comparing it to the status quo. But, you know, look, all of us are looking at the world from the perspective of the world, so it's easy to look at the progress and lose sight of the fact that social change doesn't just happen on its own. You know, it's kind of like how it's easier to convince naive parents to avoid vaccinations when they're not seeing measles and rubella everywhere. Atheists see things getting better. They extrapolate ahead. They don't feel like we really need to keep vaccinating against fundamentalism so often. They think that the religious people will just take the nibble and not go after the bite. Or even worse, they think we've gone as far as we can go. See, the most insidious way that the status quo snuck into Todd's tirade had nothing to do with equality. It was more about inevitability. Now, usually I write off the you'll never get rid of religion altogether argument by pointing out that we'll also not, never get rid of murder entirely. It doesn't exactly excuse us from overlooking it now, does it? But the more I gain perspective on it, the more misguided I think this argument really is. Because I believe that we can get rid of religion altogether, and in a sense, I think we already have. You know, imagine that you could take a Christian religious leader from 500 years ago and transport him to today. You know, you got some important European cardinal or something, gets into the DeLorean, comes to the present day, wherever he was from in the first place, and you show him today's religion, find out what he thinks of it. 
Let him compare the power the church had in his day with the impotence that it has today. I mean, sure, the word religion is still there. The word God, the word church, but the concepts and institutions that those words represented five centuries ago are gone. You know, you might find something kind of like them in some parts of the world, but by and large, they're nowhere to be found. So imagine that the Christian religion loses as much of their strength over the next 500 years as they lost over the last 500 years. You get so close to zero, you might as well call it gone. There is progress. There is change. This is the only time in human history when the majority of people were governed by secular institutions. The secular world has already replaced almost every important function that the church served 500 years ago. They're still clinging to a couple of things, sure, but we're encroaching on them as well. And if history is any guide, the secular version is going to be way better than the religious one ever was. So stop telling me that we're never going to get rid of religion just because we've always had it. Everything that ever went extinct only did it once.